What's going on everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com and I'm excited to start a new type of video for the channel and that is a team scattered report. What this video is, is I'm going to break down every little thing that you could think of about a specific team in a specific game. In this case, I want to start off with the Kansas Jayhawks in NCAA Football 06. This was a team I've been looking at for a little while for a future dynasty perhaps. But what this type of video is, this is going to be a way for you to get as much information as possible in case you want to use this team for your next dynasty or if you're scouting them as your next opponent. And I'm going to be covering a lot of different things, and I'm really excited to get into it. So let's just get started. Now, I want to start off with the very basics and the visuals. Now, as you see here, Kansas, they are a B-minus overall team, C on offense, and B-minus on defense. And we will cover the roster here in a little bit. But you see the logo, the blue, all that good stuff. But let's go to the stadium. Let's talk about this. It's Memorial Stadium there in Lawrence, Kansas. Capacity of a little over 50,000. they got a grassy turf. Now, we can go to the preview and we can get a view of what the stadium looks like. This is kind of a big deal for me. If I'm going to be running a dynasty with the team, I want to enjoy what I'm looking at in terms of the stadium, the uniforms, all that good stuff. But I think the stadium looks pretty cool. It's a horseshoe. I like a lot of the blue edges everywhere. That's a cool end zone. Of course, the logo is pretty slick as well. You can go over to the end zones and see what we got there. It's just Jayhawks on one side, and, it may be, and it's Kansas on the other. So, at least this gives you an idea of what the stadium looks like. Now let's talk about the uniforms. This is one of the only few downsides with Kansas in this game is if you notice the dark blue uniforms compared to the actual logo and their regular blue. This was the last season where they done this. I mean, it's a cool looking uniform, don't get me wrong, this is the default home. But it just looks a whole lot better when they use the actual blue. I don't know what they were thinking at the time, but as you see here, this is the default home. Blue helmet, blue jersey with the white pants. You go to the default away uniform. It just switches it up with white jersey and blue pants. Then you go to the first alternate. This is the alternate home uniform, and it's all blue. This looks pretty slick. I like that a whole lot. And then you go to the alternate number two, and it's just your all white look with the default blue helmet. Here we have Kansas Rivals. They have Missouri as their default. It's the border showdown. And then it's against Kansas State, which is pretty natural being in the home state and such. But this is the battle for the Governor's Cup. So keep that in mind for future schedules if you're going to run Kansas in a dynasty. Here we have Kansas in terms of starting a dynasty with them. They are a four-star academic school, and then they got a two-star program prestige. But I want to briefly talk about their history. I like to look at the first few years before this season and the first few years after that. So when you go over here, let's look at their history a little bit. Now, this is the 2005 season. This is right in the middle of the Mark Mangino era at Kansas. And you notice before that, you know, four and seven the year before, six and seven, then two and 10. But then shortly after that, you know, this was the year they went seven and five. They started turning things around a little bit. The year after that, they went six and six, and then they had their amazing season in 2007 going 12 and 1 before things started teetering off a little bit for him. While we are talking about Mark Mangino, let's look at the coaching profile. We'll look at the playbook here in a minute, but they got their offensive type as balance. Base defense is a 4 3. You look at their offensive sliders here, they tend, I mean, they're a balanced offense, as you could tell 52% run, 48% pass. Looks like their conservative, aggressive meter is right at center. Then sub less, sub more. They just don't sub as much as normal. You go over to the defense. They really favor the run, and they're pretty aggressive to boot. And they'll sub in a few more guys than normal. Here we have the Kansas playbook. Now, I always suggest if you're going to run your own team, you create your own playbook. But this is going to be great for scouting purposes at least. But you look at their default playbook, we just saw earlier they run a balanced offense, but you look, I'm seeing pretty much across the board a little bit of everything. I see three 11 personnel sets, a couple 20s, three 10 personnel. I'm seeing a lot of three and four wide stuff with a couple fullback oriented formations thrown in there. In your first season of your dynasty with Kansas, you're going to start off 63rd in the country overall, but... Here we can look a little bit more at their roster. And overall, like I said, it's B minus with a C offense, B minus defense, and an average special teams. 
now let's talk about the roster. Now, before we get to the particulars, I want to show you a couple things. If you go over to my website, you go to the very top, you click on downloads, you scroll all the way down, and you have all of these roster files for all of the PS2 games in ESBA football. And this is great for people who run on an emulator like myself or have like a Max drive where they can convert all this stuff to the PS2. If you don't have that option, you can always buy a 128 megabyte memory card for me that's got all of these files in there with plenty of space to do with whatever you wish. This has been a very popular method to get rosters from me. I highly suggest it. it just takes a few days to get your card in and you're ready to roll. Now, the particular file that I'm using is I got this from the NCAA Football 06 PS2 site on GameFAQs.com. And it's the RSX file. And this got created over 600 players. If you remember, these games were pretty much designed back in the spring every year. And the rosters weren't filled out completely. A lot of the default rosters had barely 55 players on each team. Well, he filled out most of them to where most of the teams would have close to 70 players. He put in a bunch of real-life players. He done a great job with it. And I've always had a lot of fun with this particular file. So let's talk about the roster. This is a big picture view of where your talent lies. You got two guys in the 90s, and both of them are defensive players. And then you get a handful of guys in the 80s. As you can tell, once you get down to like the number eight guy, you're down in the low 80s. So the talent isn't all that great for the big 12. But I just want to give you an overall view of where that lies. Now let's go to each position. Let's talk about the quarterbacks. You got two guys that are about the same. Barman and Swanson, 80 and 78 overall. Neither one can run the ball all that much. So you got pocket passers. And your third stringer can run a little bit. Now the fourth stringer, there's just not a whole lot there to look at. But you go over, yes, the awareness, that kind of matters in this game. But since you are controlling the quarterback, this doesn't matter as much. But if you go over to their arm ratings, you got the throw power. 87 and 90. For Barman and Swanson, you go 82 and 78. So it's like a pick your poison, just whichever one you want to roll with. And then Meyer below that has just a little bit lesser of an arm. So Barman's a junior. Swanson is a senior. If you want to be really efficient with it, you may want to redshirt Barman and try to get a year out of Swanson. That way you get two years out of Barman. So you get three full years out of both of those guys. But it's up to you how you want to handle that. We'll go over to the halfbacks. And this is your main stud, Clark Green. You're going to go... Everything rolls through this guy. 86 overall with 87 speed. He's really strong and pretty smart to boot. And his backup is a little speedster, 90 speed. You go over to their agility, acceleration. Both of them you know, are pretty athletic. But look at this right here. Green's got 76 catch. That can be very useful. And he's got an amazing carry. That means he's not going to fumble the ball too much. He can break tackles on top of that. And speaking of, you go to the break tackle, 85 for Green. Again, this guy is a pretty good ball player. I would focus a lot of my efforts on this guy. You go to the fullback situation, there isn't much of one. You got one guy that's 65 overall, and that's it. Now, if you remember looking back at their playbook, their playbook reflected this. They didn't have much of a fullback presence in the playbook, a lot of 11 and 10 personnel, and this shows that. So something to keep in mind if you're going to start off with Kansas. Look at their wide receivers. You got one guy in the mid-80s, and then it's a big drop-off after that. You look at the speedsters of the bunch. Uh, Rue, Rowe, however you want to say his name, and then Simmons, 92 and 91, and then it's all in the 80s. You go back here. A lot of these guys are a little bit of a every mix of everything in terms of their height because you got a 5'11", 6'4", 6'1", 6'2", 6 feet. But, it's again, it's a big drop-off after your number one guy. So keep that in mind. You can go over to their catch. A lot of these guys can, you know, are okay catchers. 86, and it's just kind of a drop-off after that. Again, just a bunch of average wide receivers. Uh, their jump, everybody's kind of like in the 80s there. But one thing to keep in mind, they do have a bunch of receivers, like a lot. So you can go 11 and 10 personnel. And again, it goes back to the playbook. It reflects what we're seeing right here. You look at their tight end situation, they got a 78 overall with a 68 speed, but look at his backup. We got a true freshman in Josh Bale, 6'7", 250, 80 speed. Then you go over here, and he's got 74 catch. So this could be the future of your offense if you choose to run an offense that's kind of built around the tight end in some way. 
So definitely keep that in mind with this guy right here. I think he's got a lot of potential to do some serious damage with. Otherwise, there's not a ton of talent here at tight end. You look at their tackles, and their best guys are is an 84, then it gets down to 78 and 74. Again, just a bunch of average guys. You got one guy that's pretty decent. He's a senior. And then you got a junior. And you go over to their run block and pass block. Just a bunch of stuff in the 80s. Typical. You may want to have this guy be your left tackle. Just because it looks like he's got better pass and run block. But that's kind of up to you how you want to do that. I would probably start it. I mean, it's pretty obvious. He's your number two best player at tackle behind... Uh, with Rodriguez behind him of some sort. So you may want to have this guy left tackle. You look at the guard situation, it's kind of the same. You got one decent player, then it's a drop-off after that. 84 overall for Whitaker, then a couple guys in the 70s, then it gets really rough beyond that point. You go over to their run and pass block. It's two guys and a bunch of everybody else in terms of like their abilities on blocking, both passing and running. So Whitaker and Ochoa looks like will be your starters. Pretty simple decision there. You look at their centers, they only got two guys. You got a sophomore and you got a redshirt freshman. Just okay, nothing great. Again, 76 overall. It's probably one of your worst centers in the Big 12. Defensively, we looked at it before. They run a base 4-3. And it's the same thing. Uh, one guy in the 80s and a bunch of guys in the 70s. Decent speed, okay. Everybody's in the 70s, but it's all low 70s. You got a couple of big size guys like Rodney Allen. If you ever want to try to go do some 3-4, you can maybe do a little bit of that. But their tackle situation, everybody's in the 70s. Nothing special there. So just keep that in mind. Just not a whole lot to work with at this point. But there's enough speed here where I can see why you'd want to stick to the 4-3. Defensive tackle, again, one guy in the 80s, and then it's a real drop-off after that. Clinton at 76, but there's just nothing behind those two guys. And this guy's pretty small. 6'1", 260. McClinton is 6'1", 290. Your front four doesn't look all that spectacular. You're going to have to recruit to get better out of that unit. Outside linebackers, you're going to have some talent here. You got Nick Reed, a senior, 90 overall. It's not even an impact guy. Then you got Banks Floodman, which is a great name. 87 overall, but he's an impact guy. Then you got a couple guys behind them that you can maybe redshirt. So they got some bodies here. So there's some good stuff to look at, an outside linebacker. You look at their speed, a bunch of guys in the 80s, which is encouraging. You go over to their tackles, 90, 80, 78. I mean, a couple of these guys right here, if you can get as much as you can out of your first season with Reed and Flubman, you'll be doing great. Middle linebacker, this is a bit of a weak point. I mean, their best player is a 74 overall, and he's very slow. This is the worst part of the middle linebacker, because none of them are fast at all. And it helps to have at least a little bit of speed here. Look at this guy, 6'3", 250. This could be a future defensive end. You may want to think about that if you're going to convert him down there, if you're going to, especially if you're going to run a 4'3". But there's just not much after these guys. Their awareness, one guy's got decent awareness, so he'll definitely be your starter. But there's just not a whole lot to get excited about. Decent tacklers. Like Joe Morton's 85 tackle, that's good. But he's got 65 speed. Can he chase anybody down? You go to the corner, and you got one of the best corners in the country, a Charles Gordon. He's a redshirt junior, so hopefully you can get two years out of the guy. But 92 overall, he's really small, but he should do some good things for you. But after him, it's a drop-off. 82 overall, then it's an even more a drop-off once you get to your nickel. It's 72, 72... Everybody's kind of short. You only got one guy in the 90s in terms of speed. And you can go look at their jump. Everybody's in the 80s, except for this guy. This guy can't even jump at all. But you go to the tackle. Of course, corners can't really tackle much. You're going to be doing some nickel, I guess, if you have no choice. But your outside linebackers are so good, you may not even do much nickel. You may be doing a lot more 4-3. You're going to get like four wide sets just because your two outside linebackers are so talented. Free safety. Okay, you know, your starting guy's going to be, you know, he's a senior, 80 overall. He's not the fastest in the world. You got a junior behind him that's a little bit faster, but his awareness is nowhere near as good. Again, just not a whole lot to get excited about. A strong safety overall, just, again, two guys that look exactly the same, Jerome Kemp and Akib Tlaib. This guy, if I'm not mistaken, this was the guy who ended up being like an All-American a couple years down the road, went to the NFL and such. I could be dead wrong on this. 
but I would start this guy over Kim. He's much faster. The awareness isn't much of a difference. We can look at their tackles. A strong safety, I guess they don't attack all that well in general. Uh, but I may want to start to leave over Kemp. Kicker, average 74 overall, but he's a sophomore, so you got a couple years out of him before you can recruit another one. Now, hopefully you get a better one in there. Oh, we can look at his, his leg. Kick power, 86. Kick accuracy, 86. Then you go over to the punter, 78 overall, sophomore. So at least you don't... You can wait a couple seasons before you really bring in a hopefully better kickers. But this guy right here is nothing special. 88 kick power, kick accuracy is just 84. So that is the entire roster. It's a decent roster to work with. It's a good one to kind of get into if you want to really build a program with a team that's not the best in the world in terms of competing in that conference. Let's look at the returning players. I think this is a good idea to look at in terms of just get a rough idea of what you're going to be recruiting for, you know, in your first season. As you can tell, you're going to need some help, a quarterback, halfback, fullback, depending on what type of offense you're going to run. Every one of your receivers looks like they're coming back, so you don't have to go too hard on that. Tight end, you got that one freshman, so you don't have to recruit too much there. You got plenty of bodies at guard, tackle, you may want to pick up another one. Center seems okay, they're young. Defensive end is fine. Depending on which defense you run, you may need to pick up another defensive tackle or two. Outside linebacker is going to be a huge need for you because outside of the main studs you have currently, they're going to be gone and they're going to be some hard shoes to fill. Middle linebacker, as you can tell, it's your weakest unit at C-. minus. I would get as many good players as you can. Middle linebackers are so useful in this game. Corner, you need to get bodies at corner unless you're running a certain offense like a 4-2-5. A 3-3-5 three, three, where it doesn't require a ton of corners. But as you can tell, you need some bodies there. Then you got free safety, strong safety. Again, I would just get you know get better players if you can there, but it's not the biggest need. But you look at the bottom number, 51 total. All things being equal, if nobody leaves early, that type of thing, you got 19 spots to fill. So you got plenty of room for your first recruiting class to bring in a nice haul. Let's look at the conference outlook. Here's the Big 12 as a whole, and they have Kansas all the way down as number 11. So you got a lot of work cut out for you starting off with Kansas. But it's it would be a fun rebuild for sure. You go look over to the Big 12 North, and they have you dead last. And thankfully, this is the weakest of the two divisions because you look in the Big 12 South, you got Texas and Oklahoma. Those are just tough outs, but thankfully, they're not in your division. So there is room to grow here. If you just play your cards right, play smart, recruit, get better players in, I think you'll be okay a few seasons down the road. Here we have the program standards for Kansas. As you can tell, the NCAA team interest bar is a little under half. I always suggest you get that as low as you possibly can. Over-discipline, it scares, it scares your players, I think, when you over-discipline and such. You don't get as many guys in trouble. I have no proof of that, but I've just kind of seen it over the years that the harder you discipline, the better chances you have of not having as many kids getting in trouble. So definitely keep this in mind whenever you get to the offseason. You need to put some points in here unless you luck out and you've got a handful of players that you could discipline in that first season. Now let's talk about the pipeline states. Kansas is off to a really good start in your first season in terms of their pipelines. California is one of the pipelines. You can't ask for anything better than that because there's so many players that come out of California. The only downside is it's a little far off from Kansas, as you can see on the map, but that's okay. I st understand if you're going to use this as a pipeline going forward, you're just going to spend a little bit extra points going after those guys just because you're just far enough away from that state. Then you go to the next pipeline, which is Missouri. Missouri is not going to produce as much talent as you can see on the little red bar on the right. But you can find some studs here if you look out. I wouldn't mind if you kept that as a pipeline going forward just because it's so close. It's right beside you. So by all means, keep that as a pipeline if you can. The next up is Oklahoma. This one is even better. They tend to have a few more bodies than what Missouri does. It's not going to be as good as like California or Texas. But you can find some good guys here, and as you can tell by the map, it's really close to Kansas. It's right below it, so I would definitely keep this as a pipeline. Then you go over to Texas, last but not least, the Lone Star State. A ton of bodies here, as we all know. 
no different than California, and it's much closer than California. So I would definitely treat this as my number one pipeline state. Get as many bodies as you can out of there. Now you look at the map, you got other options. I mean, but they're not going to be the best options. You know, Nebraska, Iowa, Colorado, New Mexico, they're not going to produce a whole lot of talent. One you may want to think about just in terms of proximity is maybe Louisiana. That's not too far off, and Louisiana produces a lot of talent in this game, if I'm not mistaken. We can check it here. Yes, you see here, look at that little red bar on the right. Just a ton of ball players in Louisiana, and it's not that far off from Kansas. That's just something to think about. You pick the pipelines however you choose. So hopefully you enjoyed all of this. I thought this was a lot of fun. Hopefully you got enough information out of it to scout an opposing play or team like Kansas or you may have found enough here to maybe you want to start a dynasty with Kansas. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.